Okay, guys, welcome to one more special call. Today we have Yoni. Yoni is uh, my friend from Amazon, <laughs> who is, uh, let's say, the guy, if Amazon, if Amazon owes you a money, he is the guy you send him, but he will not beat them, but he will take your money back. <laughs> Yeah, so, but I just I just gonna say I'm not the guy. I have a whole company behind me, and I'm so not it's forty help. guys behind and the girls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ladies, it's a whole team of uh, men and women. Yeah. Welcome, Yoni. Welcome to my special call. Uh, feel free to you. introduce yourself and tell us something more about yourself. <clears throat> um, we're gonna touch about Getira a bit more into, into the presentation, but I guess I can share about myself a little bit. Yeah, I'm based uh, out of uh, here at Teaneck, New Jersey, about ten minutes away from New York City, so essentially New York City area. Uh, born and raised in Israel uh, to an American mother. So after I finished my Israeli service in the Navy, I came here to uh, learn in school. I got uh, uh, married, I got kids, and I got stuck here. So I'm already here for 13 years, um, but it's been good so far. With a bit uh, of Serbian blood, let's let's mention that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit of Serbian blood from my genetic roots. So uh, my father's from North Africa, and we were able to get to uh, North Africa through, you know, Turkey, Greece. Um, yeah, of course. Serbia, Serbia. Um, and then down to Italy, and then uh, Sicilia to North Africa. But that's a, a different story for a different time. Uh, but today I'm a, the, um, one of the co-founders and COO of Getira. Uh, I'm gonna, like I mentioned, we're gonna touch Getira a bit more into the presentation, but Getira was actually born as a side note um, from our experiences as Amazon sellers, from retailers. When I say we, it means I mean myself, I'm the co-founder, and I have my co-founder, Max Boren, uh, who is the CEO. <clears throat> We were also partners in e-commerce. Uh, so about 11 years ago, we started selling online when, at eBay. In 2003, we started selling on Amazon. Uh, sorry, 2010 and then 2013, we started selling on Amazon and very quickly the business grew from zero to 20 million. And then we became a part of a larger group that together as a group, we did about hundred million. And we created a solution for our needs to track and monitor all the FBA transactions to see if anything's wrong and if we owed money. So we built technology and created a team and uh, we created for ourselves. And, and then when we told our friends from the industry that we have this solution, they told us, help us, we'll pay you. And that was the early beginning of uh, Getira, which started in 2015, about six years ago. Uh, so yeah, that's a little bit about ourselves. Yeah, great one. So uh, as a, someone who is beginner in Amazon, especially many of my students, uh, what exactly you are doing, you know, how you can help us to you know to improve our business and how we can yeah do some things better you know yeah yeah so yeah this is pretty much the idea of the presentation um so we're going to focus on this presentation how to reduce your amazon fees uh and hopefully by doing it successfully we're going to give some tips and advice and strategies you'll be able to increase your profit i also want to give you guys some tools how to handle this so that's mm -hmm. going to high level the purpose of the presentation Inside the presentation, you're gonna learn a bit more things about FBA reimbursements. That's kind of the world that Getita lives in. But this is not the whole presentation, not just about us or, or trying to make a sale or anything. It's really to help you guys learn something new, something that uh, that might help you, uh, you know, improve your business, make more profit, and, and keep on growing. That's kind of pretty much the purpose and mission of this uh, event and presentation. Some, some parts we didn't even think about. So many of many of uh, beginner sellers didn't even think about this part. So it's important to catch. You know, to cover this part, even to get some money, even if it's not a big money, but at least small, but it's, you know, it's yeah, good it's better to get ready. Yeah. yeah, it's better to, it's better to get ready because you guys want to focus on growth and marketing and the branding, whatever the magic that creates the business. That's your focus as entrepreneurs, as business owners, right? Our mission is more like archaeologists. We're going to look to the past with a little toothbrush and the sand. We're going to rubble through all the, all, the, all, the, all the dust and all the mess. And only if we find something that is valuable, then we're going to help you guys out. You are but giving a life to a dead money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Life to dead money. Yeah, I like that. That's the kind of our mission. But we'll get into that. So if you want, we can start the presentation. We can start yep. rolling it out start. and get the whole party started. All right. So uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you so much, Radu, for this uh, opportunity and for You're reaching welcome. out um, and give us the stage to, to help out. Um, like I mentioned, the, the, the main um, topic here is how to reduce your Amazon fees and hopefully um, increase profit. Um, so, you know, like I mentioned, well, now we're going to touch a little bit more about Getira and not just about myself. You know, what is a Getira? Is it Getira? Is it Getaira? Uh, it's, it's actually, it's an acronym. It doesn't really matter. You can say uh, it stands for Get IDA, which stands for Get Intelligent Data Analytics. So you can say Getira, Getaira, whatever you want. That's okay. Um, 
So we believe in maximum recovery of FBA reimbursement tailored to, to uh, simplicity. We want to make it very simple for the Amazon sellers to achieve that. Uh, we look ourselves as a global leader in FBA auditing and reimbursements for the simple fact that we operate on a global level. So if you sell on Amazon US or Amazon Canada, Amazon Mexico, UK, uh, D for Germany, whatever it is, we can help you. So we work on a global level. We are an award-winning business. Uh, we won the gold award from the American Business Award for our dashboard technology. Uh, we do have a dedicated team of claim specialists, so they handle the cases for you once we find the problem. And a big part of our team are ex-Amazon employees. We used to work in the Amazon FBA reimbursements department. Uh, we track and monitor our recovery rate. It's over 70%. So for every cases, 10 cases that we're going to open for you, about seven cases plus will get reimbursed. So we, uh, having accuracy is very, very important. So we're not wasting anybody's time. And we like to make our solutions affordable for all sellers of all sizes at any time. So, you know, from the beginning seller that even didn't even ship their first shipment to FBA, you can join for free to get Tita, all the way to the top 10 sellers who do more than $400 million a year on Amazon FBA, you know, alone. Um, so yeah, because our fee is, uh, we only charge a fee from the recovery. We charge a 25% fee. So if we got you $100 back, from the dead that wasn't available before, 25% in turn will be $25. So it's very affordable because we only get paid if you get paid. Um, where can you find us? Uh, of course, you can find us at getita.com. Of course, you can find more about Sloboda, Amazona.com as well. Yeah. Um, but you can also find us on the platform, which means we're an authorized solution provider by Amazon on a Sell Essential. So if you visit the App Store, you put Getita, you're going to find us there. So um, that's kind of also the first tip of today. Uh, Amazon has allocated $14 billion okay, for the app store to develop it and to make sure that they check and vet and authorize solution providers. So if you're not sure if you want a tool or software or anything for Amazon business, a good place to start looking is the app store. If you see that it's there, it's authorized by Amazon, it's a good start. If they're not authorized by Amazon, maybe you want to reconsider. And the reason is because uh, and now that we're authorized by Amazon, Amazon, we have double commitment. We have a commitment to the seller, but also a commitment to Amazon. So we're like Amazon sellers ourselves. The standards are very high. The data security, Private security, you know, private security, everything, the whole data to make sure it's very, very safe and everything is very compliant. That's, so that's kind of the first tip for the, uh, today for, um, for this presentation. Okay, now we can start really uh, digging into um, all the bardak. You guys also say bardak in uh, Montenegro? No. You know what bardak it, means in Russian? What does it mean? Bardak means like a mess, the whole, uh, uh -huh, like uh -huh. a mess. How do you say you guys say bardak in uh, Montenegro? It's uh, yeah, like this sort of mess, like a big mess, you know. <laughs> we have a terrible word, huh? Terrible word, okay. No, don't say that one, no worries. <laughs> okay, all right, so now we're gonna start with uh, kind of uh, the nitty gritty of things. So, here we're gonna have a quick, I don't want to over uh, uh, dive into this, but uh, I can, you know, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna share with you later the, the PDF file so you can share with you with the audience right. and, and your, your yeah, followers. But this is how you grab a certain type of report that can help you calculate your pick and pack fees, your Amazon pick and pack fees. And for now, I'm going to call it type A, fees type A, because we're going to have a summary very soon. So you go to reports, all statements, you click the second option, download flat file. Of course, you make sure you know which time frame you're using and download the file. Over then that report, you're going to find this type of fees, the Amazon FBA pick and pack fees. Second type of report is all the rest of the Amazon FBA fees, right? Because if we want to calculate, um, minimize our Amazon fees, we need to calculate how much they are. So this is kind of um, what we're doing here very, very quickly. So fees type B, which includes inbound, return, storage, removals, and manual processing. You go to reports, transaction view, service fees, download. Of course, make sure the time frame equals the first, time, uh, the first report you downloaded. So this is quickly how to download the reports. And now it's going to bring us to our case study summary. Ready? Boom. Yeah. Okay, so this is the case study summary for the uh, for the reports that we. Uh, it's just, from Amazon, uh, yeah. Yeah, so this is the the Amazon. So yeah, so first of all, this is a case study for a five million dollar seller. Okay, because we see the product charges sales essentially two hundred and twenty thousand dollars for every two weeks. It's four hundred forty thousand dollars for twelve months. It's about five million dollars. So this is the page that all every Amazon seller works for. Okay, it shows you all the sales and how much you're gonna get in the bank. Okay, once the sales are ready to go, right? So um, more blue is good. Huh? <laughs> more, more blue, blue is, is good. good. <laughs> yes. So you want more blue, less red. That's pretty much the whole. I think I'm done here. If you understood that you need more blue, less red, <laughs> I'm finished. Um, but now, but but see the thing. So this is kind of fresh. They kind of updated it recently, a few months ago. Before that, it looked a bit differently. So this is the updated version. But the our mission is to focus on the red and really minimize the red, right? So if you look over here, uh, so I want to also uh, point out that the purpose of the presentation is to to help reduce the Amazon FBA fees for the most part. 
right? So if you look here in this uh, this red, the, the biggest part of the red is it just says Amazon fees. So if you're a seller, you see Amazon fees, you don't really realize what fees there are. And this might be very confusing. And why? Because if you look a little bit above, it says FBA fees. But this is so, not uh, without a PPC, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. And this is not even including PPC. This is a separate thing. We're going to touch that later. Um, so if you look at this page, you're going to think, oh, FBA fees, I'm doing good. Because let me, let's break down the numbers, see what's going on. Uh, see the fees type A? Remember that first type of reports I told yes. you? So if you grab it, you'll find that um, from the Amazon fees, the total Amazon fees is 77,000, but fees type A is 43,000. Pick and pack fees. This is the king of all Amazon FBA fees, the pick and pack fees. So this seller paid 43,000 uh, in pick and pack fees, which is fees type A. So 43,000 divided by 219,000 is almost 20%. Almost 20% of all the income, the revenue was paid in pick and pack fees. What's a pick and pack fee? This is your product, you're selling a cell phone cover. Amazon picks it from the FBA unit bin, right? From the bin, they, they pick it out. They package it in a box, they ship it out, they charge you a fee for that, a pick and pack fee. So this is the big winner. So if you see, it says just Amazon fees, you think there's no FBA fees, but it's not really correct. If you download the data, you'll find that there is an FBA fee, it's called pick and pack fees, and it's very, very heavy, and it's very, very impactful. That's pretty well one of the main messages here of this um, presentation. But the second FBA fees, you see, it's only 496. You think, ah, oh, 496 is not even, uh, you know, half of a percent. So I'm doing okay on FBA fees. Because Amazon's data is hiding. You always got to realize that Amazon's data, things usually kind of hide. You got to dig in to find more meaning. So this is what we did here. So we have two types of fees, fees type A, fees type B. And this is where they're hiding on this page in this level. And if you want to grab the reports, we showed you earlier how to do it. Now let's take a quick boom summary and see how, how it feels it looks like, right? You got a $5 million seller, FBA fees type A is 19, FBA fees type, uh, fees type B is about almost 0.2%. Uh, and so that's about 20%, but let's add the selling fees. Don't forget, you gotta sell, you gotta pay 15% or more, depends. If you're selling jewelry, you pay 20%. Selling electron, if you're selling electronics, that's 8%. So 20 plus 15, that's 35%. But let's take a little notice, like you said, Radul, you, you hit it the, hell, the, the nail on the head. You also gotta add your PPC spend. So that adds more fees. So my, your PPC spend, your A cost could be 10%, 15%, 20%. That can add even more, but I'm not even touching that. I'm touching like, you know, the first layers. I don't want to overkill you guys, right? <laughs> um, I don't want to make it too depressing. So let's say with this example, 35% of every dollar in, in sales, you know, is, are paid in Amazon fees, which are burning, burning through the profit. Because if you have a $5 million seller, 1.75 million are paid in annual fees. Okay, so I encourage each and every seller here when you get a moment, grab the reports, know your numbers. Know if you're 35%, 38%, 43%, whatever it is, know your number. That's the first mission. After you know your number, your mission is to do whatever you can do. I'm going to give you some advice on reducing it. So if you get the same sales and you reduce the 35% to 34 or 33 or 32%, boom, your profits will jump. Reduce the fees. Also, same also the overall value of the company if you want to sell it. Yes, you again, you're jumping the gun. We're going to touch that orally. I, I, uh, I feel like you saw this presentation somewhere or you know your stuff. <laughs> no, um, I'm preparing to sell my shares. Yeah, I got it, I got it. You, you're in the right Think mindset. Every sure. percent is important, you know? Every percent is humongous important. We're going to touch that uh, later on. Very good, very, very good. So yeah, this is the main purpose. Know your numbers, uh, whatever it is. Okay, now you know, and then do whatever you can do to improve it. And if you do it successfully, you know that you're a professional and you're really on the right you're gonna succeed in Amazon for sure. There's no other way. If you know your numbers and you know how to push them up, that's it. You control the game because a lot of sellers kind of focus just on the ACOS level, right? They reduce it, reduces the, their advertising costs and they kind of forget all about this. So this is the moment where I'm gonna help you focus on this and this we're gonna put on the side for now, okay? Yeah. All right, so now that we know that the pick and pack fees, FBA pick and pack fees are the king of all fees, um, now this builds a new strategy for us to consider, right? So I can share with you that the amount that Amazon charges for the pick and pack fees, once again, Amazon picks a unit from the bin, package in a box, ship it out. The amount of money they're gonna charge you is based on the weight and the dimension of the product. So the larger Amazon thinks or heavier Amazon thinks your product is, the more you're gonna pay. Of course. Okay, this is the, the rule. So, so because of that, what can we say right now? If you make your products in the smallest packaging, the lightest packaging possible, you're gonna pay the least fees, the least amount of fees, right? Okay, so like we mentioned here, why packaging matters. Amazon fees are based on winning dimensions of the individually pad packaged product. So now you, you, you know, there's a few ways to touch this. I'm gonna touch very simple ways. One seller might be sending an inflated ball like this to Amazon. So if this ball is when it's inflated, it's um, 
20 inches, but you guys in Europe, I'm gonna say 20 centimeters. Okay, the dimension. Yeah. Um, but another seller uh, might sending it uh, deflated. Okay, so and because of that, two uh, sellers will pay a different amount of fee for the same exact item. So if you send it this way, we have this nice gentleman here squeezing the ball. So now instead of being 20 centimeters, maybe it's gonna be five centimeters or five inches. Uh, the distance of fees can be very large. For example, this, because you're in 20 centimeters or 20 inches, Amazon might charge you 10 units every time, $10 every time they pick it from the bin, package it above, ship it out, they might charge you $10. But when it's like this, the dimension is only five inches or five centimeters, they might charge you two and a half dollars. So here you pay seven and a half dollars more every time you sell a unit. So you sold a thousand units, you overpaid $7.50 per unit, that's $7,500. For example, yeah, because so if you if you if you exceed the, the the product weight, Amazon add you for all something exactly. Like There's tiers, so you know that so they, they start to charge you by the volumetric size. Yes, yeah. like so it's, it's two it's two things. It might be the weight if you're one pound or a hundred pounds, different price you'll pay. And they even didn't explain that uh, in the you know in the, if you want to get some information, so you cannot find it so easy, you know. They are adding four ounces. As well. <laughs> right, right. So, so the lesson is simple. Whatever you guys are selling, make sure it's always on the smallest uh, weight and dimension. So the materials that you're making the packaging, make sure it's light. It's not heavy. It's not metal. It's not wood. It's as you know, as light as possible. Sometimes even the tape around the product can uh, <laughs> can push yeah, you to go over size. Yeah, if you, yeah, if, if, uh, yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah, the packaging. So if you're in okay. half an inch, half a centimeter, they're gonna charge you more. So if you, especially on the borderline, you know. If if the distance if the distance between uh, five centimeters and sixteen centimeters is uh, another dollar, okay, and you're on the border, do whatever you can to reduce that half a half a centimeter that you're away from or one of centimeter. Course. That's why they need to do this drop test. It's really important before shipping because after shipping, it depends how they handle in the post. You know, with, uh, when they Agreed. throw your 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 packaging, you yeah, know? It goes, it change goes the like, size and Amazon will not take the smallest. <laughs> they, Amazon <laughs> if they have the, the opportunity. Yeah, they have the opportunity to take more, they'll take more. I mean, it's easy business for them. Another example here, if you're selling pants, you can have two options, right? This is even more simple. You can sell it out open, right, your jeans, and then it's gonna be 60 centimeters or even one meter, and they're gonna charge you $100 every time they, pay, they pick and pack. Mm -hmm. Or if you roll it, you put it with a little shrink wrap, some nylon, and it's tight, you're good. It's only gonna be like eight in, uh, centimeters or eight inches. So think small, think light, okay, and, and always do that. now. I'll have a little message for you guys to understand kind of the difference between e-commerce and, and old, uh, you know, retail, right? So in old retail, packaging was very important. You want to make it big. You want to make it uh, 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 shiny and beautiful. Why? Because you're, uh, you're on the shelf. So you're, you're fighting for the space. You want to push out the other competition. Plus, that's one thing. You want to push out the competition. You want So you have a larger package, more space for you. It's good, more eyes, right? But also, your packaging needs to be shiny and beautiful so the consumers touch it. And then they put it in the cartridge and buy it. That's how they make make a sale. When you're in e-commerce, totally different game. Yeah. Your shelf is your listing. Your digital shelf is your listing. The way your image look, your 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 titles, your copyright, your enhanced brand content, your A plus content, your PPC campaign. That is how you scream to the consumer. You know, add me to cart and buy me on Amazon or in anything that you're doing e-commerce. So. Because of that, once you made the sale, it doesn't matter. They're always going to get your your product in Amazon packaging with a little smiley. Right. So once they open it, they already sold. Now they want the utility. They just want to use the product. So you make it nice, small, elegant, and smart, and you're gonna save a fortune, a lot, a lot of money. So having the idea that the mindset is very important and acting accordingly. So check how much your wedding dimensions is. Check how much Amazon's chart is for each uh, wedding dimensions. If you have opportunity to reduce it, reduce it. You're gonna save a lot, and you're gonna thank me later. Yeah. Always, always ask supplier to fold your product in a few different ways. To send the example to see what is the best one to, to protect right. you, to save your quality and yeah to save your yeah. work with your suppliers to maybe create a, if your product is really uh <clears throat> large and like let's say you're selling toys you want to make a large box like this or you know it's for the shelf maybe no maybe reduce it you know package it differently so look for opportunity to save in that aspect and, and it's going to do wonders for your so business. some products you, you cannot you cannot change the size of course but you can't say uh, even, you can't even change, if you bundle yeah. your product with something that is really not necessary can save your fees. You know, maybe that bundle will not work. It's not important too much. Maybe just changing the color can help you. You know. Right. Yeah. Also, the materials. Instead of having a wood packaging, you of put course. a, a nylon, and then all of a sudden it drops a pound or half a pound, whatever it is. You know, yeah. every part. The purpose. Yeah, story. it's simple and uh, yeah. Yeah. Every product has its own story and profile. 
you guys, you know your stuff better than me. Look for opportunity. If there's opportunity, take action. It's going to work. That's yeah. pretty much the message. Okay. Now that you, uh, you, you entered into the, you did the, the first thing, then there comes the second thing. <clears throat> After you ship your product to the Amazon's fulfillment centers, you need to keep tracking the wedding dimensions to make sure the data doesn't change. Okay. Because if it changes, Amazon is going to start to overcharge you. Okay. There's many reasons, Mike, uh, why it uh, might change. This is important. Yeah. What you input yeah. and what Amazon. <laughs> Things. Yeah. They might change over time. So uh, it could be different. So uh, you have to keep uh, tracking and checking. I'm going to give this a few examples why, but I'm going to give two simple examples uh, that I know of uh, that we've, we've seen. The first example is very, um, you know, um, it's very normal uh, and it's civil. The second example is more like militant, you know, if somebody's attacking you. So let's start with the simple one. So Amazon, what they do every once in a while, every few weeks, or maybe a few months, they're going to you're they're gonna throw your product into a big machine. They call it a cubic scan machine. And in the machine, if they scan it and all of a sudden they get a different result, they're going to update your, your information and start overcharging you. For example, if you shipped in, you have a handbag. You're selling a handbag. And when they scan in the machine, it has a strap loose, hanging loose. Something's hanging loose. So now it's adding another 20, 30 centimeters yeah. to your product. It's going to distort Amazon's scanning and data, and all of a sudden, your fees are going to increase. Okay, so once again, if you're shipping a product like a handbag, nothing loose. Put a nylon on it, make sure nothing loose ever. Put it, put it in the bag. <laughs> yeah, put it in the bag, whatever you can do. And also, Drop if you it. have room to, yeah, if it's puffy, you know, put a, maybe shrink it as much as possible. Of course, yeah. make sure if it doesn't ruin the, the quality or whatever, everything makes sense. <clears throat> okay, one second. One second. So, um, all right. So we got that covered. The second example. <clears throat> sorry, I got to drink some water. Drink some water. Okay. The se second example is with somebody maybe attacking you. And again, let me give an example. <clears throat> your competitor, if they want to hurt you, what they can do is they can take your ASIN. They can uh, list your ASIN on their Amazon Sell Essential account, and then they're going to change your information. So instead of saying, thank you. So instead of saying your product is at uh, one pound. They're going to change the data to 100 pounds. And instead of saying your product uh, when in dimensions is 10 inches, it's 100 inches. So they change your data. They never offer the product. They never sell it. All they do is list your ASIN, change the data. And from that point on, Amazon starts to overcharge you, overcharge you, overcharge you, overcharge you. And by the time you realize, they charge you so many, so much fees. Some competitors do that too, you know, because you're fighting on price. You're trying to sell for $20. They're trying to sell for $20 or whatever it is. And our ranking, whatever. And... Um, they're paying normal fees and you're paying all these over fees. And then by the time you realize what happened, you're already out of business. Yeah, they have, <laughs> you have a big problem. They, they have some access to, to our, uh, through the vend, uh, vendor center or something like that. So that's why you need to, when you upload your listing, it's good to take down your listing. I mean, to uh, download it with a flat file and to, you know, to input all your data about your product, as much data as you input. It's even better to protect you from, uh, from. Uh, yeah, vendors. I'm going to give a, yeah, we're going to give some solutions for that in a minute. Uh, but, um, yeah, we've seen that happen, unfortunately. And uh, also, one thing to remember with this um, this type of issue is that Amazon only gives. Um, okay, let me reverse. If you find that Amazon is overcharging you because they have incorrect data, okay, the two things you got to do. The first thing you got to do, obviously, open a case, tell Amazon to update the data. So going forward, they stop the bleeding. You don't over overcharge. It's the first mission. Second mission is to get money back, reimbursements. Uh, this type of claim is limited to 90 days. So I encourage you to doing this check every, every 90 days. Maybe every month if you can, but no later than 90 days because let's say for the whole year, Amazon charged you $10,000 extra in fees, but the last 90 days only charge you $3,000. You're only going to get $3,000 back. The $7,000 is gone forever. Okay, so I want you guys to understand the rules of the game and uh, do, 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 your, do your job on time. And if you need some help, you can visit online.getita.com slash ebook. You're going to get access to an ebook, which has a lot of information on uh, income statement. But also over there, you're going to get a package of, of a few tools. One of these tools is a wedding dimensions tracker template. You can be able to put your, your information and then grab Amazon information and do a check. Okay, so this is a free tool that, we guys, that we're giving you guys. Um, or if you don't want to do that, there's another option. You can uh, visit getita.com, click on free sign up. It's free. You connect your account. And then on the left side... Um, you can click on pick and pack and inside the dashboard, you're already going to see Amazon's data. So you don't have to go to Amazon and grab all the data. It's already going to have Amazon's data for your convenience. You can even click, click here and export table. It's going to have all of Amazon's data and then you can do the checkup. You can use our dashboard technology free. This is, this is a free tool for Amazon sellers, whoever wants to. Of course, if you want to help, to, if you find problems and you, uh, you want us to help in opening case and stuff like that, you can upgrade later and it will help you, not a problem.
Okay, so uh, once again, I'm, I'm presenting you a problem uh, or, or an opportunity also to save money going forward, but also get money back if you got hurt from it. Okay, and this is kind of the, the tools that we can uh, offer just you guys. Make, for just to make it clear for the people that you are not charging nothing in advance when you are doing. That's correct. So we don't if, charge anything in advance. It's free to join. So when Anybody you, can when, join Katira. Yeah. When you did the job done, then you take commission from that dead money. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Only we only charge money if we got your money back. Yeah, if we got your hundred dollars back, uh, our twenty five percent fee is twenty five dollars. That's the way we roll. If we if we got so you zero dollars back, you pay zero dollars. To give it to get it to do for you, and they will hundred percent do it much better than you doing to through any other software. Yeah, yeah, honestly, it all depends on the focus and how much time you have in your hand. If you have time, do it. We encourage you. But of course, if it's too much for you, too much of a headache, we're here to help. I I, I personally would, would not do. I I try to do <laughs> everything now. Honestly. Yeah. My, jo my job is always to approve the PPC in my team. So it's what I like to learn and to learn more strategies and to, yeah, to, to, to train yeah, our team. But that's other, correct. other things I don't want to think about it. Yeah. This Some about things are just, uh, yeah, they're just painful. It's just very painful. Uh, so pay, we're here to, pay people to, to the, who are professional in that. Yeah. Right. Okay. So here's a, you know, just uh, for you guys. Uh, to, uh, so this is kind of the package of once again, if you visit online.getita.com slash ebook, you're gonna get access to uh, this free ebook, which is how to read an Amazon income statement. You know how to send the, the numbers a bit better on the income statement. Um, second is um, actually the third is actually the the way in the mention tracker that I mentioned. But another tool is what I think is very important for you guys also to have is a profit and loss tool. Because right now I kind of taught you how to recognize the Amazon fees, right? Which is very important that you know. But you also need to know your business fees. Right, so what we need for that is a tool, a profit and loss tool, so you can include all the fees that you have in your business. Because what is a business? Sales, cost of doing business, which leads to other profit or loss. So this tool will help you. This tool will help you, you know, enter all your types of uh, uh, costs. It can be advertising, it can be uh, parking tickets, it can be uh, taxes, uh, sales taxes, VAT, whatever it is. Everything that you have in the business, you need to calculate it. And this is the tool that's going to help you. And then you'll see the bottom line. You're making profit or you're losing money. And of course, once you know your line, your, 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 um, your numbers, hopefully by uh, utilizing all the strategy in this presentation, you'll be able to see how it quickly improves. So it's important that we give you guys the tools to, to recognize the data. That's why, that's why it's important to split the bank accounts, to have business bank account and to not have personal bank account yes, connected with Amazon. Yep, for yep. the bookkeeping, for CPA, for selling your business after, it's everything is easier. And Another tip, if you want, this is not in the presentation, but yeah. some some a lot of businesses that I know they make a business for sorry they make a uh, bank account for incoming from Amazon, and then they have a second account where they pay they pay for the business expenses. It's yeah. not on the one account. So you have one that comes in, and then you move from that one that comes into the one that everything goes out. So one account for in, one account for out, makes accounting and the data and reporting so much easier. And it's free. Banks, you know, you can have two accounts in one bank. It's free. It just makes uh, handling a bit easier. Once again, small tip: it's not on the, not on the slides. If you guys, if you, it's for your consideration. Also, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right, guys. Another opportunity to uh, bring more money back into your organization um, is th through this uh, tip and advice. Okay. So, when you sell on Amazon and you get, uh, uh, so uh, you get Amazon FBA returns. Usually, is that there's two statuses. Okay, for your Amazon FBA, FBA inventory. One status is that it's fulfillable. Right, they can keep selling it. The other status is unfulfillable, right? And when your products, your FBA products are unfulfillable, you essentially have two options. One option is dispose, get rid of it, bye bye. The other option is you can do FBA removal order, which means you take your units out and then you do whatever you want with it. In, so this, in just a moment, we have ten more minutes because I I didn't know that I have a limit for uh, Zoom. Okay, so. Um, what do you want to do? You can. Uh, you if want you, to stop you can, it. You can if you if you have uh, something more to add. It's okay, because we don't have a question. So we will add the questions after. Don't worry for that. Got it. Yeah. I mean, there's another. So you have ten more minutes. We have. Yeah. Got it. Okay. I'll try to wrap it up in nine minutes. It shouldn't be an issue. Yeah. Okay. And if we need more, we'll jump back again. You know? we, yeah. That's why. <laughs> Even better. I yeah, got it. Okay. So here you have basically two options. Either you take your inventory back or you dispose it. So here I'm going to even give me a mathematical example. For uh, that, uh, which means that you know it's probably worth it for the seller to uh, take the units out and and sell it back on Amazon, right? So you know yeah, everybody can do this own calculations, but you have the unit cost, right? Your cost of goods is two dollars. To remove it from FBA, it's fifty cents. 
to do an inspection. So open the product, check it if it's good to go. Uh, and then uh, if it's good to go back to FBA, it's as good as new. You you, you send it back. So I call it resale cost. Is, you know, you package it again, you put it in a box, you ship it out. So now your cost changed from $2 to $6.5. Okay, triple, 3X. Yeah. But let's see what happens. You put it back on Amazon, you sell for $20. The Amazon fees is about 32%. So your money after all the fees is $13.60 minus $6.50. You're still making $7 profit. Okay? So you invest $6.50, you get $7, you get more 100% on your money within a few weeks. So this mathematical uh, example suggests that, yes, it's worth it for the seller to remove the units from FBA, inspect them, do all the headaches, pay more money, but then get the money out plus profit. Okay? So because uh, we see that 70, 80% of the products that are unfulfillable, they're good to go. They usually no problem with it. Seller, you know, just uh, consumers just were uh, sending back Amazon. Uh, you know, they think Amazon thinks there's a problem with it, but there isn't really a problem with it. So it's up to you to take action. Uh, uh, how you deal with this uh, when Amazon is uh, giving us uh, a product instead of money? They sorry, they do what? Uh, uh, when they when they lost our product or they are damaging our products, you know, they uh, to for reimbursement they don't they don't give you money. Sometimes they give you a product. Yeah, so if it's customer damage, they don't. But if it's uh, warehouse damage, it is. Uh, we help with that. We can we're able to identify what was the original status. Uh, if it was a uh, warehouse damage, if it said that uh, the product wasn't damaged and you, you get a damage, there's an opportunity to get reimbursements. Uh, but we do this with this company called Tradeport. So if you ever need, you can visit Tradeport, uh, tradeportusa.com. They inspect the product. If the product is eligible to get reimbursement, they give us the data and we file for reimbursements for the sellers. Yeah. That's one option that we have. Um, so you guys can check it out. Okay, so once again, guys, you can uh, consider you know this. Uh, look at the numbers that you, you know, put an open Excel file and see if this makes sense for you. If it does, take action. If it doesn't, uh, you want to dispose. Uh, disposing, that's fine as well. But there's an opportunity here. Like I want to remind them once again, we find that most of the products that are, are unfulfillable, when you take it back in your warehouse and you check, they're good to go, most of them. Okay, all right, so next uh, next type of uh, uh, tip, okay? Uh, try to avoid as much as possible FBA manual processing fee, okay? So I'm here, I'm giving kind of the main examples of these type of fees. So when you ship, uh, you make a shipment to FBA, you'll find that, that um, Amazon might require you to put polybagging, okay? And usually they want to do that on, uh, sorry, somebody's, uh, yeah, I have to mute. Sorry. No, it's okay. Yeah, okay, got it. So um, polybagging, right? So uh, you'll find that in the middle when you're preparing the shipment, they'll tell you, okay, you, who do you want uh, to polybag? Uh, you need to polybag this product. For example, let's say it's a shirt like this. See the shirt? Uh, it needs a bag. And the logic is why does it need a bag also? Because in the warehouse, things can get dirty. You don't want the shirt to get dirty. It's just more cleaner. So they're required to put a bag. Now, if you don't have a bag, uh, and you want Amazon to do it, you can choose Amazon to do it, but what's gonna happen, they're gonna charge you a, a fee for that, you're gonna pay money. Second thing you wanna consider, it's gonna make it's gonna take more time for your product to be available on FBA. So you're gonna pay more money and, and get your product's availability even slower. So that's not good for you. And also you'll find out that you know, the fee, the amount of fee will usually in this area when you prepare the shipment. So this is type of a, a fee that you should probably avoid. You should probably talk to your factory and tell, making sure that if you wanna ever ship it to FBA, they wanna need polybagging, the factory is doing it for you. It's going to cost you very, very cheap compared to Amazon Plus, and you'll get your products in TFBA much sooner. Another thing is taping, right? Usually it's for items with the box sleeve. For example, this Apple iPhone, just as an example, you see how it have a sleeve when you open the box. So um, if you have this type of box where it has a sleeve, if they don't want this, you know, the, the products to move and shift and, and go to get lost, so they're going to expect you to tape it or shrink wrap it. So if you don't do it, they're going to charge you a fee for that and probably a big fee. And uh, also, it's going to be uh, it's going to take them more time to receive your product. So try to avoid it. Uh, another thing is F FSQ labels. Usually for resellers, if you're not just selling your private label, you're also reselling stuff. You want to put the uh, the FSQ labels. You can do it, or you can let Amazon do it. You should do it yourself because if you let Amazon do it, more money, more time. Last thing is uh, missing bond content, uh, box content information. I'm going to touch it over here in this slide. Okay, so when you try to finish your shipment, your shipment, you see in this area uh, that. Um, they're gonna give you an estimation, right? So for this little example, it's 490 units and Amazon charges 10 cents a unit. So it's $49 to pay uh, for, every, for a manual processing fee for box content. So what does that mean, box content? Every box that you shouldn't uh, ship to Amazon FBA, they wanna know exactly the units, are, that are, the ASINs that are in the box and how many units have each ASIN, right? So if you say, if it, whether it one box or a thousand boxes. So this they want you to- for transport box? Yeah, yeah, to transfer your, your products into FBA. Yeah. So FBA it's not for a product box, it's for transport box. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, so you want to ship uh, 12 pallets from China, yeah, from the, the factory, pallet. whatever yeah. it is. They want to know what's coming in. If you don't tell them what's coming yes. in, they're going to charge you 10 cents per unit uh, from January all the way to October. And then in November, December, they're going to charge you 15 cents per unit. So why? If you're shipping at 10,000 units, okay, one, uh, 10%, 10 cents uh, per unit is going to be $1,000 for no reason. Yeah, of course. Okay, because you're not going to tell them what, what you're bringing in, okay? If you're shipping 100,000 units, it's $10,000. If you're doing it at Christmas, November, December, that's fifteen thousand dollars. So avoid it. There's no reason. Once again, you pay more fee. Plus, because they need to do it, they want to check which and every, each and every box. It will be slower. Okay. So they have an area on the bottom of this page. Usually, you got to tell them, you know, box one, box two, box three. What's going on? You tell them. Uh, one tool, if you if you really do it yourself and not through the factory, there's a, a tool that costs I don't know twenty dollars a month. It's called Box T. We used to use it as sellers. I'm not connected to this fa to this company. I'm just not used to use it. I uh, so you scan your products into the box. Um, if you want to close the shipment, it tells you, oh, you're missing units. Okay, that's one thing. Second thing is, once the box is ready, they, they you can print a label, a 2D barcode label. And once you put that label, you stick it on the box, Amazon can scan it, and automatically they know what's in the box. It's really cool. So this tool makes you not think. You just scan, scan, scan. And once you uh, you you, um, you finish a box, you get a sticker, you put it on the box, you know what's in the box. And then once you finish your shipment, it tells you if there's any anything above or beyond or, or missing, by the way. It helps also to to finish the shipment. So we used to use it. So we used to ship thousands and thousands of units every day. So it was really helpful. Uh, and that's for you guys to consider. Okay. So now we're kind of entering into the bread and butter of what we do, Gatita, to be honest. Um, you know, the refunds booster. You know, Amazon, so the rules of the games are as follows. So when you sell on Amazon FBA, so hopefully, you know, you open your Amazon business, you sent your products in, congratulations, you started generating sales. That's amazing. Really, that's pretty much... Uh, very, very uh, hard to do. And uh, it's, it's, it's a good thing that you guys accomplished it. And if you do, I congratulate you for that. But just keep in mind that over time, as you build your business, um, Amazon provides an opportunity for your FBA business to look back and, and uh, get uh, money back or reimbursements back for issues that happen. So high level, you can go back up, up to 18 months. Not for all issues, mm -hmm. but most types of issues, you can go back 18 months and check the data. But Amazon okay. is doing a really good job in, in any way. They are really trying to help us. You know, it's not like that the people think that Amazon is bad. Amazon is really good. You cannot have really any fair. other platform on their own business who can help you to go, grow so fast and give you such opportunity to make such amount of money. So Great. this 100%. this percent of one of three percent overall, it's it's really low. What's happened for this reimbursement? And usually some other companies who have a really bad maintenance of the company, you know, it's they have yeah. <laughs> I'll give you a few examples. So like you mentioned, so uh, you know, first thing we want to consider that the discrepancy rate can range between one to 3% on the annual revenue. So yeah. if you do a million dollars a year, you know, uh, on the annual level, it can be 10 to $30,000 that you're eligible to get money, right? If you're doing 100,000 a year, it's, it's 1,000 to 3,000, right? Um, so if you flip it on the other end, it's amazing. It means that Amazon does an amazing job 97, 98, maybe 99% of the time. Yeah. And, they're, and they're dealing with more inventory than any other company in the world, maybe besides uh, Walmart, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um, so if you ask Nike, if you ask Adidas, even Apple, if one or two, three percent is good, they'll tell you, yes, it's amazing because they can do five, six, seven, eight percent like that. Easy. Yeah. Okay. On the logistical end, um, like I mentioned, Amazon allows up to 18 months to get most of the money. Uh, but after 18 months, cases will expire. So do not miss out. This is your money. They're eligible to get it. Uh, and once you start opening cases with Amazon, Make sure you read them, the rep Amazon's reply. And if Amazon needs more more information, reply to it. They might ask you for more documentation like a BOL, bill of lading, POD, proof of delivery, packets, or whatever it is. Give it to them so you can get the most that you're eligible to get. And of course, if any of this is too much of a headache for any of you, there's solutions out there that help with this. It happens to be a good with one of them. If you need our help, we'll be you know, willing to help you with our pleasure. Um, uh, and also, if you're wondering why do you need even help, uh, it's because, you know, you can take a quick look at what we look for with the Amazon account, you know, all these types of issues. So if any of these issues you're not uh, familiar with, it probably means that you're leaving money behind. There's opportunity an uh, opportunity for you to get paid. But instead of, you know, crying about it and, and suffering from it, we can come in and help you and just put the money back in your, your pocket. And we only get paid if we were successful, only if we got your money back. If we didn't, uh, we just wasted our time and our money. Um, and here's a case that's study. That's great and it's fair. Yeah, it always works. Whether you're just starting or you're the largest, yeah. yeah, largest seller in the world, it's always you know always makes sense. Plus, we're customizable. You might tell us, listen, these types of issues, I know how to do. Leave it to me. Everything else, I have no idea. Help me. We can do that. We're customizable. 
So keep that in mind. Uh, also, here's another case study about the positive impact of good Amazon FBA reimbursements, okay? On the bottom line, on the business, right? So here we have a case study of an $18 million seller, sold 300,000 units for the year, about 9,000 units got affected. So it's almost 3%, it's 2.8%. We we got them back 1.5% of reimbursements, okay? And then what, that 1.5% of reimbursements uh, was $151,000, which positively impacted the bottom line by about 11%. Okay, so, and why? Because before Gatita, the profit was 1.3 million and 151,000 that was added pushed the bottom line by about 11%. Okay, so this is the positive impact of good auditing on the bottom line. 1% from the top, boom, pushes almost 10x the bottom. But uh, in the free Amazon business, there's more opportunity, there's more impact. Like you mentioned earlier, a dual. If you want to sell you, there's two hats you can wear. One hat, if you sell your business, you know, when you sell your business, you're selling your profits, you know, so, and whoever's buying your profits, <clears throat> Is going to pay you two, three, four, five years into the future, right? Yeah. So three to five years. So, so this is the, so if we added 151,000 to your profits, they're going to pay you three times of that. All of a sudden, this 151,000 is worth 450,000 or more. Yeah. Okay, so boom, more. it boosts you because they're going to pay you for that exit. Also, if you bought an Amazon business, let's say you bought this business, you went back 18 months, the seller just left all this money behind, you got it back to your pocket, it improves your return on investment, your ROI. Okay, yeah. so this is the positive impact of, you know, a, a good professional uh, FBA auditing and uh, maximizing everything that you're eligible to get. Um, and I want to uh, one last thing that I want to mention that if you don't get the maximum that you're eligible to get from Amazon uh, in reimbursements, you're losing twice. The first thing you're losing is your investment, the money you invested to the product. But the second thing you're losing is your profit. And why? Because when Amazon pays you an Amazon FBA reimbursement, uh, they pay you for the retail value. They don't pay you for your cost, right? They pay you yeah. as if you sold that unit on Amazon, and that usually includes a profit. So our mission or your mission as a seller is to ch to change the double negative momentum to double positive momentum, where you get your money out and all the profit, and then it fuels your growth. Then you can invest, take all that money back in, and then you can invest more into PPC, your next product launch, your marketing, your branding, whatever it is. But it is you need to do to keep on it's growing. It's your money. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's your money. It's better to be back in your pocket than going to somebody else's pocket. So um, if you need some more help or more incentive to, to, uh, to try us out, we prepared this offer for, uh, you know, Radul and his followers. Um, so if you just visit online.getita.com slash Radul, you'll find this offer. The first $400 that we're going to get you in Amazon FBA reimbursements will be free. We're not going to charge you a penny. Okay, so you can try us out. You know, after we get you $400, if you like the environment, you find the value, you want to stay, you can stay. If after you get your $400, you want to leave, that's fine as well. We're here to help. Well, our mission is to help you grow and, 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 and be powerful. Um, and of course, if you just visit getita.com and you click on free sign up, uh, the actual promo code name is Radul400. So just to make it clear, I don't have any penny from this. <laughs> yeah, you don't need to. We paid you $1 billion in Bitcoin already. Before. <laughs> yeah, That's so. Okay. Yeah, Dogecoin, this is. Yeah. Dogecoin. <laughs> Which coin? Dogecoin to the moon. <laughs> yeah, to the moon. All the way. So yeah, this is the idea. The idea is really uh, to to give you guys the ability to um, to get what's yours and and just this is all we do. This, we do this day and night, and we'll be very very um, uh, um, appreciative if you give us the opportunity. And of course, if there's any questions, you can reach out at getita.com. We have a chat box, but we also email me directly yoni.m at getita.com. Um, and that's it. This is kind of the the purpose and mission of the presentation. Once again, we first identify the types of fees. Right after identifying what they are and how much the, the, their value is or how much the impact is, uh, we give strategies, a few strategies on how to minimize them. We give a few tools how to keep calculating and tracking them. And after we did that, we give some more advice on how to boost the profit bottom line through reimbursements. And that's it. This is pretty much uh, and, be more, uh, and be professional when you ask Amazon for reimbursement because <laughs> don't lose your chance to communicate with them. Because if 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 I from the beginning if I have a made communication with them. To, they will not answer any case about me. <laughs> yeah, so Amazon <laughs> wants this process to be as simple as possible. They want accurate data. They want to understand you the first time, not the second or third or Make fourth. Make it clear what you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you were just wasting their time, uh, they're not going to be happy about it because another seller is professional. They're not wasting their time and it reflects, you know, it reflects better on your account. <clears throat> Same, any, any questions, anything, but you have any issue, if you don't, you need to do step-by-step step and to be professional, to, to get the point, even if you, even if you make it, need to make it bold, but you right. know, you split the questions, what you need and, 
Yeah, they they I don't have any problem with them, honestly. And, Very good. Uh, but many okay. people have it. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so, okay. I mean, uh, I, uh, that's. Guys, if you have right any now. questions, you can ask uh, Yoni, or you can ask it here, or you can also type in the comments, or you can uh, just uh, add uh, Yoni on the Facebook. They can add you. Yeah, sure. On email, well, Facebook, on LinkedIn, I'm very active. So, um, you can answer your yeah. questions. Uh, guys, thank you for being part of this call, Yoni. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate your knowledge, and I will continue to follow your work on any other. Uh, podcast. <laughs> All right. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Radul. Thank you, everybody. I wish you much more tremendous success in uh, uh, on the platform and, and in business. We're here to help. So anytime you need our help, we're here to you know at your service. I see somebody put something on the chat. Maybe you want to read that or check she that out. She said, "Thank you, Dushitsa." Say thank Dushitsa. you, Dushitsa. Dushitsa. <laughs> thank you. Okay, guys, uh, stay on call, and uh, for the rest of you, see you on other tutorial on my YouTube channel. Bye, bye.